All right, welcome to Stampscape's Friday Night Live. I have been preparing my work area here for the new designs. A little bit more preparation went into it than normal. <laughs> what I've done is I've re-inked my um, hybrid black ink, my water-based black pigment ink, my water-based white pigment ink, and uh, not my stays on. I, I reinked my dye based ink. I don't know if I'll use my stays on tonight. But, okay, so we have um, several different types of paper here. Mostly, you know, or all, I guess, the quarter size cards. We have the vintage papers. I have a couple of the uh, printable vinyl sticker paper holographics. Um, Semi gloss card stock gloss cardstock, and if I, I don't know, if I have time, I'll try the uh, the um, gold foil here. I imagine some of these cabins with like just a moon stamped in white or something like that in here. Uh, wood grain paper. Uh, we'll see what I get around to, um, and we'll just see what comes up. I don't have, you know, I don't know if I have a itinerary for any of these live streams, but um, I don't know, there's just so many different things I want to try out with these new designs. I just, it's really hard to, uh, <laughs> just, because some of them, you know, uh, would be great using with other designs as well, um, existing designs like the hammocks and trees. Okay, so hello, Linda, hello, Patty. All right, so let's see here. Um, let me just get to, let me just try out a couple of things that I, had in mind when just kind of looking at some of this paper just now. Um, let's go with a couple of these pieces right here. They're kind of dark. This is the vintage paper and the vintage um, papers all have um, kind of um, a vignette around them in the full size eight and a half by 11 pieces. And I quarter it. So we're, you know, we have these little corners like that, but um, some of them are fairly dark in value and I thought that would be good for a nighttime type of simple scene. Um, let's try out one of the or both of the uh, nighttime cabins here uh, on different pieces and I'll just see if I can come up with a really quick scene using these. Um, on something like this I've have my pens ready here and I can just illuminate the interiors of these uh, cabins here and I think that might be uh, pretty interesting. Um, let's place this. Let's see if I can get a good dark print on here. Um, this paper right here, that's that's on the vintage paper. It's kind of uh, distracting as far as uh, something. So I'll see if I can stamp something right over the top of that part. It's supposed to look like aged, you know, paper. Hello, Jeannie. All right. Ooh, hybrid ink. I just re-inked everything, too, so it's really, really juicy. Maybe a little bit too juicy. But we'll see how it goes. All right, so I've just tested these um, stamps on glossy cardstock yesterday with dye-based ink. So let's test it out with some different inks here. Uh, pre-printed paper like the vintage or the wood grained uh, find a good ink that's going to transfer onto your paper really well um, like Versafine Claire would probably be good too um, but allow that ink to transfer um, to your page paper a little bit more than you would on an uncoated style of uh, paper card stocks and that type of thing. Hello, Sue. Yeah, I'm excited to uh, try these out here. All right, so there goes our little cabin, like so. Now that is, I stamped it in the darker area for the purpose of kind of illuminating the uh, interior there. Let me see if I can kind of get this person's head. This person's head is a silhouette. And uh, let me see if I can get her right in over the top of that. This person's like sitting on a dock at nighttime. 
um, but she's bundled up in a little blanket on a on the near shore, so uh, she should be adequate, adequately, uh, you know, warm. <laughs> Okay, so that cabin that I just stamped out was this one right here. Do you see those um, interior lit windows like that? What I'll do is I'll just go in and I'm gonna color those windows in using this acrylic paint pen. That's the concept right here at least. And then here she is going to be looking across this, you know, body of water. It could be an, like an open meadow, but I, I don't know. I see it as water, of course, with this little dock here. All right, let me see if I can get that silhouette of her head uh, blocking off that uh, vintage paper blob there. All right, so uh, speaking of um, impression, um, what are um, quality on the pre-printed paper? That is pretty dark. It's not as dark of a black as you would get if you stamped it out onto a piece of, you know, cardstock or something like that. Um, just, I don't know, I'd say it's like a 92% gray or something like that. Um, if you saw something really dark next to it, it would, you know, be pretty obvious, but that's pretty good. That's what you can kind of expect um, with certain types of inks too. I mean, that looks a lot darker because it's against light right there, but, um, it's it's pretty dark, so uh, again, just allow that ink to transfer, and uh, you know, it's usually from most of the inks that I've been using, it's usually better to hold down a little bit longer. With if you're using something like a stays on ink or something like you know solvent style, it's going to dry really fast. You don't need to hold it down um, really long. But the other, um you know, water-based, oil-based types of things, they have to kind of penetrate a little bit and transfer. Um, so, um, I don't know, try different impression um, durations with your different styles of ink, okay? And just find a good one that works for you. There's usually several that work, you know, pretty good um, with most of these, but some, I don't know, if I make an impression like really fast and I lift up, it's like, you know, a lot, 50% of the ink is still on the stamp. So um, you just have to play around with it a little bit like that. Okay, let's see if I can get some illumination in here. Uh, this is my um, kind of more beige-ish um, 0.7 millimeter um, Artistro paint pen. They're pretty good. They're, uh, most paint pens are really good these days um, in terms of not clogging. And they are really easy to use, but they're not quite as opaque as maybe I'd like them but that's the other side of it. They don't clog on me because they're a little bit watery, okay? So just keep that in mind. Um, so when I add this down here, I'm adding this into these windows like that. Um, it usually dries a little bit um, darker than what it looks like when it's been freshly applied. Uh, you know, so just keep that in mind. Okay, so there's these little windows in this um, cabin like that. And then what I like to do is just underneath, you know, the cabin on some of the objects around here, like maybe directly underneath, I like to add in some additional highlights like that, like that um, lighting is reflecting off some of the things like right around in here. So I put a little touches in here. Now, I'm not going to do with like full scenes, but I just want to get kind of the gist of um, how these um, stamps are going to be working out or how they can work out. You got to kind of get the feel of them. Now, see, in this area right here, if I was doing like full scenes and I was just doing a card, I would stamp my, um, 
my seaside cove, like right in here, this wa body of water. I don't know, I, I could do the shoreline right here if I wanted to, and this would be like the near shore. And, you know, I would, I would mask her off and then stamp that right on in here. And then I can put some additional highlighting in here. But I just want, like, again, I just want to get kind of the gist of this. In fact, let me see, let me add in some other surrounding things in here. Let me just add in a little bit of this rocky um, texturing right here, just for a really quick... I just wanted to add in some little texture in here, just, you know, so I can kind of get the feel of it a little bit more. Hello, Bill. Hello, Bonnie. Hello, Cynthia. Thanks everyone. If you placed an order, um, still getting stuff out. I was up like all hours of the morning, uh, uh, processing and I took a bunch over to the post office and I have more to ship out still. So, um, uh, really soon. <laughs> All right, let me see here. Here, I do want to add in a couple of little things in here. When you see something kind of developing, it's like, uh, I don't know. With me, I just have to keep kind of adding a, a few things in here. Let me add a, a few of these little um, reeds on the side here, like so. Kind of a contemplative uh, image right there, huh? <laughs> if you have, you know, if you can do like a little, um, I don't know, she'd be holding on to a little steaming cup of hot chocolate or something like that, you know, that'd be cool. Or what you can do is you can add in um, a full moon up here or something like that. Now this is on dark, so, I mean, you could stamp out the full moon or you can add um, some white pigment ink behind here and then stamp this over the top of it if you want some texture. Or you can, like I said, you can just do like a white, you know, hole punch um, moon up here and put moonlight across this whole thing. Oh, okay, now see, that's what I wanna do now. I'm not gonna do it right here though. I'm gonna resist doing that, but can you imagine some, like a moon just kind of peeking over these um, trees right here and you can actually, you can have some like, moonbeams coming across here or something like that and make it really whimsical. Let's just do this right here. Let's just add in um, just a few little stars up here. Okay. But, uh, you know, just something like that. Okay, that's really, really light. Let me go to my white just for a little bit uh, lighter um, stars. You can splatter paint these up in the sky if you want to. But that is pretty fun. That's a, you know, that could be a card right there. You can just mat that on up or something like that. I don't know, it's like a five minute scene or something like that. But on this one right here, I, I really think that those uh, windows like that or really make the scene. It's the emotional kind of draw of the piece when you see um, an illuminated interior like that and it's like at nighttime, uh, you wanna go into that house, you know, um, or something like that, or you're just drawn to it, you definitely look over to it. But you can also do things like, if you wanna do like a warmer um, touch, like in the window, if it's dark enough, remember this is gonna be darker than this right here. So, if it's dark enough, maybe if maybe if it was a little bit darker in here, if I stamped it over something darker, something like this would stand out a little bit more in being light. What you don't want to do is you want to want to add in something like this if it's darker than the lighter area right there, and that might be a little bit too light for that. You know what I mean? Or it's the same thing, so it wouldn't represent light. It would just be a little bit warmer on the interior. And if you ever do that, if you ever add that in and say that it doesn't look very light, then just go over it with the, you know, a lighter one, you know. 
but it, I don't know, maybe the warmer tinge one like this, orangish yellow, might look like it's more of a, like a fireplace on the interior there. All right, so let's see here. Um, yeah, Bill, hope you're hope you're feeling okay. All right, so let's hey, let's let me try something here. I, I need to tr go through a bunch of these different um, um, designs here, but I also. When I look at this one right here, I want to see it on something like this holographic here. We can maybe do the starry holographic like this. Let's see if we can come up with something interesting right here. Again, I don't know how it's going to come out. You know, it's all kind of experiments. All right, let's see. Let's take a cotton ball. White water-based pigment ink okay it's a brilliance pad so it's water-based and that's what the printable vinyl um is designed for it's designed for water-based media okay now i have you can try um your oil-based ones but it might be different for different brands i don't know i think i've used a clair on here just a clair impression and it worked out okay i don't know if a water an uh, oil-based hero hues or something like that um pigment ink's going to work on here. But, you know, I don't know, you can always test those types of things. Okay, so let, let me just put these right next to each other so I can get my bearings on where that image goes, okay? Or is going to go. Now, I don't have to stick within, strictly within the uh, confines of this image where I'm placing this, okay? Because if I go outside of the impression zone, it just looks like clouds or mist behind the objects okay and that's I, I like that look too so and you know to cover up everything it doesn't have to rise up you know completely i don't know maybe i put too much here just now let's see something like this and then let's put this down here i don't want those stars um showing through her at least not too much, okay? or the platform, you know, that little dock right there. So this is just going to represent some kind of, I don't know, whatever, the near shoreline, and there's, um, you know, atmospherics in there, some mist, some fog, early morning, or not early morning, late, you know, middle of the night fog or something like that, okay? You don't have to block off everything 100% um, either. Okay, so something like that. So it's real blotchy and not, you know, too evenly applied. Okay, let me go a little bit higher where her head is. Okay, something like this. I haven't done this for a while. Let's see how that goes. Okay, so that is the white brilliance and I'm just stamping right over it with the black brilliance. I think you can use other types of ink over the top of this white brilliance, though. Um, so just remember, when you're doing, if you're doing this, if you're doing this kind of um, blotted out area um, with your white, you're really stamping on top of brilliance ink now. Anything that goes over the top of it, it's not like, oh, I used a you know a dye based ink directly onto this, which you can do, but it's you know it's just a little bit different. All right, let's see here. Um, which design was that? Was that this one? It was this one, right? <laughs> I have to get used to looking at these new designs. All right. All right, let's see how this goes. Um, let's see. I should probably add in some additional white pigment ink in the lower section, like right in here too, but, um, you know, so I can do some um, colored pencil coloring in there. But uh, again, I'm not going to bother with all that um, in this uh, live stream. I just want to test out a lot of uh, different scenarios. Kind of some quick, you know, some quick scenarios here.
All right, now the Sperlian Zinc impressions, they go pretty fast, but I, I still hold it down a little bit of time. Sometimes that Brilliant Zinc element, on top of this um, white Brilliant Zinc, which is on top of the uh, the holographic, sometimes it dries really fast because, um, see, this is like really stuck on here. So I think it did dry because that, the... Uh, The emulsion coating on top of this paper. Remember, it's it's holographic vinyl sticker paper, printable holographic vinyl sticker paper. It's not holographic cardstock, okay? So it has that coating on there. But look at that beautiful impression on there. I'm always kind of surprised at some of the inks that work on this type of um, holographic uh, printable vinyl. All right, let's see. Let's get her. I don't have to use. I don't have to use the same one. But let, let's let's do the same composition. There's still a little, you know, uh, uh, compare contrast uh, type of uh, scenario here. Okay. Stamp her a little bit lower on this one. On the last one, I was trying to cover up that blotch, uh, that vintage paper blotch. Okay, let's go a little bit less time. That completely dried the last time. I think I got a stronger impression by maybe lifting up sooner. I don't know. I think on the last one, on that last impression, um, some of that ink dried on the uh, stamp a little bit. I don't know if you can tell, but she's pretty dark. But then she has a little bit more of a solid area than some of these trees in here. I guess, I don't know, I guess it's the same like that. Wasn't that fun? Okay, let's see here. It's almost the, in some ways, it's almost the opposite spirit um, of that real subdued uh, um, vintage paper when you're talking about holographics like that. Well, that, that holographic is certainly more dimensional though, isn't it? It gives it a lot more depth. Look at this one right here. This one, I don't know, it looked different to me, but now when I put this like here, when you're comparing the two of them, this one looks like a lot warmer to me for some reason now. Just in terms of like a temperature contrast, this one's for the most part, it's cool kind of neutral um, tone in terms of temperature. Like, look how uh, dimensional she looks like, like that. That almost looks, that literally looks three dimensional down there, that, that figure down here. But see, this is where that little mist is right here. So you don't have to go like right up to the figure, you know, and kind of figure that out. You just have it kind of diffuse out there. But then you see how you have that base layer ink of white down here. And now you don't have all these stars showing right through your dock or, you know, see in those trees, there's a little bit of it showing through, but you know, where you put a little bit more solid, you know, it, it's pretty good to, you know, it blocks out the, you know, the um, the background enough, like that. And let me ch let me do something. If you haven't seen me do this before, um, this is to me this is like a super dynamic um, combination right here because you normally can't use colored pencils on something like this type of paper at all, right? You can't use colored pencils on foils, right? But this brilliant thing lays down a surface on there and this is completely dry too and adhered to it too uh, remember it's not uh, cardstock though that, that that's what people do they they go and they say hey, i i got some of that holographic so i'm going to try it and then they do it on holographic cardstock instead of holographic printable vinyl and it's nothing sticking to it or drying so it's like oh my god you know he you know he tricked us you know or something you know you made it look so easy you know is what the, they usually say um, but, you know, it's just using the wrong media, or they use 
an oil-based uh, pigment ink or something like that instead. Okay, but anyways, you can add in, like, here's a little bit of color um, on this dock right here. If you want to add, like, a little bit of brown or something like that. And this is nighttime, so, you know, probably, you wouldn't have all these color schemes showing, especially warm tones, but... It's kind of fun to go back and add these types of things in here like this, but see this transfers and it's like the same as, I, I'm not, I should let this dry a little bit longer because I'm kind of smudging a little bit of that black. So I'm gonna, I'll do this more in a follow-up video, but adding these um, colored pencils down on top, you're coloring the brilliant sink really. Um, it just works really, really nicely. And I find that colored pencils, um, in terms of a textural contrast are really nice because you have these really sharp, you know, super, I don't know, whatever, um, loud visuals in the metallic foil holographics right here. But color pencil coloring is like one of the softer looks of a media that you can apply. So I find that kind of softness plus the, uh, you know, in contrast to that type of, uh, pattern in the background to be a really good kind of balancing uh, medium for that. Now I'll go in here and I'll color these trees in, a, in another video too. So anyway, two cards down, same uh, composition, but completely different look here. And this one right here, it'll be really fun to go into these um, trees and color them with some, I don't know, different colored color pencils. All right, let's see here. Um, Let's try something on the wood grained paper here. Okay, now I, if I use this hammock, I, I want to use this hammock I don't like this. Let me try something with this. All right, I need to find a tree. I, can, I can't do this without a... She's got to be like hanging on something with that hammock here. Let me try this right here. figuring out the scenario. Okay, I wasn't going to bring in these trees, but you know, it, I'm not going to hang this hammock on a, you know, I don't know. There's, I don't know, there's nothing in the sets to hang the hammock on. So, um, let me see, not the brilliance, but let's go with the hybrid ink again for this. Okay. I'll just use my tree trunk trio. So any kind of, you know, solid, image, let me see here, will suffice. And you don't have to get the um, the distance down perfectly with this hammock too. I have these lines that go out, but you can just extend the line with any um, pen that you're using. Oh, just reading. Did you guys get some shipping notifications? Uh, I remember some of them I've I've run the labels, but um, but I haven't, you know, they haven't been picked up yet. Some of them I dropped out, dropped off at the uh, post office. Um, th I I think let me see, and the re a lot of them are scheduled for pickup tomorrow. All right, so then we go here. If you don't know this paper, if you're just checking out the video um, and haven't seen this wood grain paper, it's a it's a uh, wood grained disposable paper placemat. <laughs> it's like perfect stuff for a uh, stampers though. It's like super cheap. It, it comes in eleven by seventeen, so you get eight whatever quarter page cards off of one piece and then um i think the pack is like a 50 pack okay i i totally forgot what price it is these days it's in my amazon store if you want to check that out or you can just look it up i don't think there's going to be multiple types of uh you know wood grained placemat paper
I don't know if you can find it like around the world, but uh, there's all you know. There's different types of that. The one, the one that kind of intrigued me too was the burlap um, looking printed um, paper. But uh, there was just too much contrast in it, so I thought, eh, it might be too text, you know, too much contrast. I didn't know if it would work or not, or work very well. All right, so I'm putting this hammock girl right here. Okay, now see those lines going out like that? You just take and um, let me see, here, is this pen working? Yeah. Um, just draw, extend those out to whatever tree or whatever object you're having your figures kind of hanging on, you know, like that. And I don't know, you can even do a, like a little tie around the tree too, if you want to. Like that, some sort of anchor. Uh, I'm going to put this thing going across the um, tree uh, trunk like that, like it's been, you know, tied off. I don't know, you can even do a little rope kind of hanging down or, you know, like tie hanging down like that. Okay. All right. Let's see. Definitely chilling in the scene. All right, some foreground. All right, I said I wasn't going to use like so many uh, like additional stamps outside of the set, but uh, with the hammock, you kind of have to. Watch out, my, my ink pads are like so juicy wet right now. I don't want to put a huge, you know, super dark impression in there. You can put other types of um, trees behind there unless you want to keep her silhouette nice and kind of crisp and don't, you know, put too many things like right around here that are too dark um, in the background. Like I said, I, I pictured this um, little figure right here looking across maybe the body of water. And here's this other cabin across there. So instead of this girl on the dock, you know, you have her. This would be really cool, too, if you had more of an, like an elongated um, thing. So you can put more things up here. You can put a quote up here. You know, a quote about, um, you know, relaxing. <laughs> All right. Let me see something right here. I, I want to put that moon in there. I don't know. Maybe not, you know. There, uh, that might be too, uh, I mean, you can do anything you want, but they're kind of out there, you know, not really dressed very warmly. And, um, uh, you know, they're sipping on like, like a, you know, like a drink, you know, in the heat. So maybe not. This figure right here, it'd be cool having like an animal out here in the distance, um, you know, coming up from like a horizon or something like that. Okay, let's see. I am thinking about like a body of water in there. I'm just, I'm gonna leave that like that. I wanna leave that open. I don't wanna like, I mean, I can stamp it again, but I just wanted to see what that would look like. Um, in that scenario right there. This is like a perfect opportunity for something. I'm not quite sure what I want to do on that yet. I'm still thinking about that moon, though. You know what I mean? It's a hot summer night, you know? And, uh, you know, she went out to catch the, um, 
whatever harvest moon or what a blue moon you know times 10 <laughs> in terms of size right there that would be cool to have a little horizon up here though okay let me think about that one okay so another scenario right here using that figure right there let me let me let me use her again um let me do a little bit of a um more of a let's do more of a, a vertical with her i love the way that looks there let's see let's go yeah i might need my, let me see my art foamies I might need to, we might need to call on the Art Foamies version of this right here. Okay, let's see. Let's take a look, another look at this cabin right here. And let's see if that Art Foamies is going to be dense enough to cover up what I'm going to, what scenario I'm going to uh, establish right here. Let's go with one of the day cabins. This is another night cabin right here. Uh, let's do this. That cabin's kind of pointing this way. She's looking this way. Okay. All right. Hope everyone had a great week. Snowing. It could be snowing in there. Yeah, the those holographics are a really good uh, one for the um, uh, winter scenes for sure, uh, Bill. Hello, Jen. I didn't say hello to everyone. Otter eyes, Rachel. Good to see you. And Candy. If anyone else is on, checking uh, this vid out. Thanks for uh, whatever logging on. All right. And if you've logged on, this is like the first time I have used these designs in uh, scene scenarios here. Only done impression tests with them so far. Okay, more of the hybrid ink on the wood grain paper again. Maybe I should have done it on a different paper. Here's a, you, can, you can see what this will look like too. I, I did the wood grain on the, the the previous scene in you know a uh, horizontal line structure and this one the wood grain is going you know up and down like this so a little bit of a different feel when you have it kind of vertical like that so i do cut my wood grain paper kind of in in a direction that you know i i, I cut a lot of it you know just ahead of time, but I do cut some where they're, you know, horizontal like this and some, you know, where they're, uh, you know, I, I, I change the direction of the grain. Okay. All right. Let's do these art foamies right here. I need a little bit of a longer, you know, tree uh, right here. Tree trunk, taller one. This is one of the things that the art foamies are really good for is um, kind of larger versions of um, detailed designs. When you get a design that's like really, really big, um, and if it's full of a lot of information, like I wouldn't go too much larger than these designs right here, okay? Because there's so much surface area and uh, you really have to, you know, get good leverage um, to get a really good impression. I just put a lot of um, blotter paper underneath mine, but uh, like the Seaside Cove, like, you know, the largest one is really big. So you have to, uh, you know, use it at, you know, a pretty decent amount of pressure on it. Where these art foamies, you know, they, they contour to whatever um, surface you're stamping them on. So, um, 
they're easier to use for the larger versions of certain things over a certain dimension, especially with my stamps, you know, because they're tonal and not, um, they're not linear designs. So there's a lot of surface area on a lot of them, a lot of dots and solids on them. Okay, there we go like that. And let's see. Which block did I use? I'm gonna see if she fits on this real narrow one. I don't know if I use this one, which is perfect for this one right here, this block. decide how <laughs> how high do you want to put the hammock in the tree let me see here we need some leaves I think okay she looks pretty good with the lake there and, the, you know, the cabin in the background. That throw that uh, tie around the trunk like that. Okay. And let's give the trees a base here. You can do it with rocks or whatever you want, you know. Any type of shoreline type of scenario. And let's see here. I guess I am. I, I had to use uh, other imagery today. Okay, this is what I'm looking for. I'm looking for leaves. And this design is called leaves right here. Oh, on this one right here, we can use our uh, paddle borders or something like that on the, on the water too. All right, these leaves, I want them reasonably dark, so I better hold this down a little bit longer. Like that, I didn't hold that one down very long. Okay, let me try to get a dual toned uh, leaf right here. In other words, have a little bit darker and a little bit lighter one behind there. Yeah, there we go. See, like that one's a little bit darker up there. It's a little bit lighter. So that one stamped out a little bit too light. So you try to make a, a whatever, you know, a weakness into a strength by having it multiple toned in here. So it looks like, you know, you have more, a little bit more depth in the foreground like that. All right, so that is that. set go here we go like that a little bit of that texturing in the water okay you can almost, you know, when you're doing these types of scenes like this, you can almost, um, on the wood grain papers or pre-printed papers, it's all, the scenes could be practically done just, you know, if you wanted them to be, just with the impressions themselves. So you really don't even have to 
kind of add shading and coloring. I, I mean, I really enjoy doing those little tweaks like that. But if you would wanted to do something really fast, you know, I mean, I think that would be a pretty decent little statement like that, just as is, you know. There's a lot of visual interest with the wood grain, kind of natural look of it. It's warm tones. Um, uh, sometimes people, when they see um, these types of things on whatever, post on Facebook or something like that, some people are thinking that I stamped on some sort of, um, like a veneer or something like that. Because it's, you know, it's a pretty reasonably, you know, realistic looking um, wood grain right there. Let me see if I want to add in anything in this background right here. I kind of like it just like that. There's this little paddler like that. I think that might get a little bit too busy in there. I'm kind of liking, you know, I'm liking some of these blank areas. I don't, you know, I don't feel like filling it in in some of these situations here. Um, get a little more contemplative right there or something. All right, so here's um, this right here. Now, see, I could I could have brought that in here, okay? But I thought it was it was kind of squeezing this a little bit, you know, to have that cabin like right here. It was almost like too close to her, so this gives her a little bit more space like that. But um, I don't know. I think we got a you know reasonable amount of dimension or you know visual whatever distance like right in here like that. I'd probably put a few more little things in here. I'm not quite sure, like maybe more of these pebbles or something like that, but really light. Maybe right over here or something. But um, I'm trying to think of anything else. I don't know, I might just leave it like as is like that. This one right here, like I said, you know, a quote stamp right in here that would kind of fit the scenario would be really cool. Or I want to do some I don't know, like a like a mountains or something like that, looking like really far out there. She can do, do a nighttime scene, where she, you know what I mean? It's like a Milky Way or something, or a galaxy. I think that'd be kind of cool. She can always be like on the moon too or something. <laughs> you don't have to anchor things onto, uh, you know, too much of a, you know, super reality or something like that. All right, let's take a look. Let's just do, let's do a couple things on just standard um, cardstock here. I think this is like, this is just some semi-gloss right here. Um, let's see, I don't think I've stamped out this one yet. This other cabin, or have I? Let me see here. All right. I'll stamp out some stamp sketches that I'll, you know, will be for the purpose of finishing off later on. Let's see. Uh, let me read what some people have said here. Santa hat on the grill you have on the Christmas card. <laughs> um, Starlet scene. Glad you like it. Wood grain placemats. Price now 16 bucks, 50 sheets. 11 by 17, that's not too bad. I've heard it went up in price, uh, which doesn't surprise me at all. I wouldn't be surprised if they're selling a lot more of those suddenly too. Um, and they had, you know, they got the market kind of locked on wood grained placemat paper, so yeah. But it's still pretty good, that's still a pretty good price, I, 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 I think. Go up and down all the time. Yeah, you know, if you kind of, put those um, um, things into like a shopping cart too, like on Amazon, it'll tell you if, uh, you know, the prices go up or down, or you can save it to, save for later or whatever. But still, I don't know, as far as like papers go and card stocks, you know, for like stamping, I find that to be a, you know, a really amazing um, price. And especially it's uh, like 50 sheets, so it's the equivalent of, I mean, it's really thin stuff. It's disposable, you know, paper, but um, um, it's basically 100 sheets of, you know, full, you know, eight and a half by 11 um, for that price. 
and then it's you know that wood for us scenic stampers i mean it's really like really really dynamic of a it's a super dynamic um surface to be stamping on i don't know maybe that's not the word maybe it's not super dynamic but it's definitely interesting um And it's really great for those. Um, and it's really great for quick cards too. But like I said, you know, I mean, you, you can develop them a little bit too. I tend to not like to do too much on them though. A little bit of shading, a little bit of colored pencil work on there or something like that, you know, it's kind of fun. Some little highlights. I've tried layering more inks on them, but it just, it kind of, um, you could do it, but it, it it wasn't the best look. It wasn't the best surface to do that on, um, in my opinion. Um, it was just too thin of a paper to do a lot of that with. A lot of those types of touches with. I think I layered on like some different dye based inks or something like that, and. Once you get like one coat down or something like that, two at most, it almost seems like the page, as thin as it is, was super set. I mean, these are just the impressions right there. You can see how much of the ink just soaked through. So it's just not, you know, it's not meant for like color buildup, you know, or media buildup. It's just too, um, it's too thin for that. You know, that's disposable. <laughs> Okay, let me try using the same stamp right here. I'm just kind of creating this other little inlet or whatever you, you know, right in here. And let's do some of these trees down here. I think we can do that. So see some of these trees on the top of that. I just don't want to get the top of that cabin really. Ideally, let me see, it's really roughly right here, but I'll just get some of these trees right here. So we're kind of creating this little, you know, uh, snaking kind of uh, body of water running through. It could be a, like, when you do it like this, it looks like a river to me, you know. Something like this, you know, this thing kind of coming through here like that. In fact, I kind of like that. Let, let me see if I can ha get, you know, some of these, more of these trees right here. So yeah, you know, you know about uh, you know um, scenic stamping and uh, like image dissection, right? So I designed these stamps to be used, you know, just in their entirety, you know, as a full image statement, okay? And of course, they're to be used. They're designed to be used with their sibling designs, you know, and combining them with other imagery, but. I also, when I'm designing these stamps, I try to figure out, okay, if I'm gonna spend a lot of time around here in like these little background trees or something like that, because I see it as like a different design if someone wants to use it that way or if I wanna use it later on that way. So like the opposite side right over here, it might not stamped out right here, but when you use it over here, there's these trees right here. Again, used down here. There's that tree right there. You know what I mean? So you can get a lot of mileage out of these designs. It's not just one stamp, but you know, it's potentially, you know, here's four different uses off the one right there. Okay. Um, so when you get your new designs, you know, think about that too, in terms of, um, yeah, probably, I, I think I kind of uh, described it as like dissecting. I don't know. That's not really the, best term for it but um it's just utilizing certain images areas of images you know for whatever your purpose might be uh, within that scene okay i'm just going to stamp out this in black i you know if i was doing it if i was stamping out just one scene for you guys tonight i would probably stamp this out in something a little bit lighter Okay, but I just want to do these kind of just quick scenarios um, without thinking about um, things like lighting and coloring and stuff like that. Um, you know, I'll do that in a future video, but 
I'm just going to stamp this in black right here, just for a little bit more drama. Okay. All right. So we got that. And then let's see. Uh, this is a little bit more distant right here. Uh, I was going to use some of my, uh, I'm itching to use, uh, you know, my little figures in here, uh, little, um, you know, the lilies or something like that, or my little paddler, you know, oh, if I had this, if I spaced this out a little bit more like that, I could have had this sailboat coming right through that little area right underneath that um, full moon right there. So this little sailboat like that, it could have been like coming, like coming home, you know what I mean? It was like gonna come, you know, through that, you know, that channel or whatever. That would have been cool. All right, you can do your like little clouds around here if you want to or something like that. Um, if I was toning this in, I would darken, you know, the perimeter like that. And I'll do that later, you know, right down here. Um, see this lighting right here? I would tone in like around in here. And then I would, if I got any tone on my windows, I would just reestablish it with, um, you know, a pen right in those windows. And then again, I would illuminate down here in this water a little bit, you know, a few little, few little highlights with that, okay? Um, I, I mentioned in the uh, like a couple of previous things. So I'll have a video and I'll do this test. I'll get some of my uh, glow in the dark ink brayed out onto a piece of uh, probably the matte cardstock or something like that. And I'll stamp a bunch of the moons out onto, you know, glow in the dark paper. And then we'll you'll I'll utilize some um, glow in the dark moons and future scenes. And we'll see how that comes out. I think that glow in the dark paint is is pretty good. Um, I've tested it before on something, but I think I can get a much bigger slathering of uh, that paint. Maybe I'll go double coat with that paint with the brayer, let it dry. I'll probably have to mount that paper on something so it doesn't just buckle, you know, when it dries. So if you tape off your paper onto a board like you know they do with uh, like watercolor paintings or something like that, and then you paint over it and then let it dry. And if it's tacked down like that, it's not gonna buckle on, on us. Glad you like the sets, uh, Laura. Let's see. Um, sketches are coming out fun, uh, Linda. As, as with that, you know, that testing uh, video last night, um, it was like, okay, all the, that engraver got all the details um, down like perfectly in the um, in the uh, in the plates, and then my my rubber guy always gets those things down really good. Um, so I was really happy about that. I'm kind of experimenting a little bit um, with the uh, level of detail in my areas. I used to use like one knit one size of a pen nib, you know, for all of my details in here, little dots, okay? And I was going with a certain um, nib size all the time because I don't want to go any smaller than that because I was afraid that um, that line weight wouldn't, which is the dot thickness, wouldn't translate into a, an engraving. But I'm using like three different sizes now. And it's giving me a lot more variation in texture, so um, I don't know. I I I, pr I might have found like the ideal kind of spot in there, you know. I'm trying to think, you know. I don't know if I'm going to be pushing it more and more and more, you know, and seeing, um, you know, just how much more it can take. But because um, I don't know, I imagine there's a limit somewhere. <laughs> You know, on the other hand, you know, like, you know, like our money is an engraving, you know, they make metal plates from that. And those, those are like, you know, I don't know, five times as detailed as, 
you know, what we're doing in stamps, so. I wouldn't be surprised if my engraver is the same one that, I don't know, they use for certain types of things. I think they're the, one of the biggest in the U.S., at least. I thought that's what it said on the website years ago. Okay, let's try something else right here. Let's do, okay, I want to do this. I have all these little koi fish and stuff like that. I want to do these shallows right in here. Okay, with some rocks and some fish swimming around in here. So we'll do a kind of a far shoreline. I'm going to put this, have it going off the page a lot, you know, quite a bit here. Um, so that I can focus on this area down here. It should really be a little bit of a long, a longer um, card. Let me see if I have something here. Yeah, this one's like, this one's like insane here. If I, you know, maybe this is a little bit shorter. Oh, let's just use this one. I don't like to go, um, I think this is, I think this is four and a quarter by 11 right here. I don't like to do this 11 inch right here, this 11 inch length right here, because I can't mat it on anything because all of my papers to mat with are eight and a half, you know, 11 inches long. And I don't have like a bunch of 12 by 12, like scrapbooking uh, papers, you know, to mat things on. But let's just see what this looks like here. All right, so this is a piece of gold, uh, glossy right here. So let's try that. So what I'm talking about is I'm, I want to have um, you know, like plenty of space. If I have these, you know, this, this cabin represents something of a certain distance away from us. So I can't put these big old lily pads like right in here. It would be the size of like a, you know, like a car or something like that, that would, you know, they'd represent something that like huge. So you have to kind of create a little bit of space before you start using those larger, you know, scale, um, whatever, flora in there. All right, let's go with this. I need to do more book bookmark types of, uh, you know, formats. I really love those kind of like super, um, slim line, you know, types of formats like that. I have a bunch of scrap pieces. I want to do another scrap um, video sometimes where I'm just playing around with like scrap pieces of paper. All right. That and let's see here. All right small mounts. Um, let's see, let's go with uh, some lilies. I'll work this around the blade. Okay, now these lilies are kind of designed, I'm going to stamp them out in just black, like I said, but they're designed for color though. Like some of these are solid and some of them are open, so you can stamp them out, you know, with some green inherently in the impression, and then color in those additional ones in whatever variation of green, like with colored pencils or, you know, your Copic markers or whatever you want. Um, but let's just do it in black again. All right. Maybe I've been using my black ink pad a little bit too dry. <laughs> I re-inked it yesterday and I was like, oh, I needed to do that um, earlier, I think. Sometimes I don't like to keep my black pads, as I've mentioned before, too wet because it fills in too much of the uh, tight detail. I don't want it puddling up in my stamp designs before I stamp it out, you know, so if a pad is like super wet and juicy, it might have a tendency of doing that, but I think I, mine was a little bit too um, dry. Okay, let's see. I had to walk down to my brother's for a minute. 
The night sky is just as clear as it can be and 60, but windy. Oh, I don't like the wind. I like all, I don't like the wind unless I'm flying a kite, which is never. <laughs> But I think of all kind of weather conditions. I don't. I don't like it windy. I tend to not uh, be a fan of that. A little breezy, fine, but not. I don't like the wind. I don't like hiking in the wind. I don't like gardening, you know, in the wind. All right, here comes some koi. Right here. Uh, let me see something. All right, I'm adding too many here, but let's just use them just because, just for the sake of it here. I just want to see them used in a, in a scenario, okay? So I'm gonna load it up a little bit more than probably what I normally would uh, do or will do. And if it's koi in this type of situation, it's like an invasive fish. <laughs> All right, so we go like that. Invasive uh, species are a real problem around the world, huh? Okay, let me see here. Okay, now again, I you know this would be really nice with some textural kind of condition right here with a you know the seaside cove or something like that. Uh, the center of it would be good with a little bit of a something like that. But this can also be just nice still water right here. Um, huh. I don't know. Put that right there. That little boat right there. Yeah, let's just do it. We're testing some things out here anyway. It's a little bit far from shore, but, you know. Let me see. I'm trying to figure out which, which is straight right here. Okay, let me see. I think that's in scale right here uh, with the fish you know the fish we're not making that you know that fish there the size of like a you know jaws or something like that by putting that right there yeah let me see now that I look at that let's add in a little bit more of the lilies right around in here, maybe. Maybe that's a little bit too much, but. Um, okay, let's see here. Some of these rocks. This is fun stuff, everyone. I can't wait to see what you're all doing with these designs when you get those ultra creative hands of yours on them. Um, I'm seeing all kinds of things with the desert series that are, that blow me away every time I log on to Facebook. I haven't been logging on to Facebook as much because I've been working on these new designs. So every time I log on every few days, it's like, oh my God, that's like such an awesome use of, you know, what a X design, you know, I really find, uh, finding everyone's piece is really amazing and it's like you know there was like a week in there or something like that of uh you know uh pretty you know i don't know what we'd call it like straightforward kind of usage okay 
like it's kind of, you know, like a predictable way of using the stuff, which, you know, which is the main way that I use my, you know, those designs starting off. And then it's like the floodgates opened and, you know, you see uh, uh, whatever the, the natural bridge used, you know, X this way, that way, you know, it's really, a really amazing. Okay, let me see. Let me make sure that I'm stamping her straight up and down. These angled designs like that, I have to kind of figure out um, the angle that I'm supposed to mount them on here for usage. We need a uh, like a dorsal fin right here of like a great white, right? <laughs> oh, so right in here it'd be good to use some uh, like water, like water pattern small or something like that. Some water texture in there. I need something to um, connect this area over here to this area down here. Um, from a textural standpoint, we'll, we'll do that with the color too when I finish this piece off in a future video. Um, but let's do some things right in here. So when you're doing all this type of little textural patterning like that, I mean, like these rocks right here. Now we'll, we'll add in some tone right over the top of it too. But when you're doing this type of thing, you're usually saying that, you know, um, there's um, some shallower area right in there, you know, near shoreline or something like that. Or when you're adding these things like this too in here, what we're stating is that the water is clearer, you know, and you can see down to the, you know, the below the surface. So it's good to add those types of things down there. You can also, it doesn't have to be in black either. It can be in the color that you're going to color this area in with. Okay. All right. So, all right, let me see here. Paddle border by the moonlight. Let's do that right here. Just because, just because we're kind of trying to cram in, you know, a bunch of uh, imagery into this uh, scenario here. Just because there's space in here. Let's do this. Like that. I'm going to have like the moonlight kind of shining in this water right down here, I think. <laughs> Let me see here. Um, what is there a really busy scene right here? When you go paddle boarding at night, you should do it with a friend for safety purposes. It's the buddy, the buddy night paddle boarding system. Uh, she's a little bit too big. Let's put something a little more distant. And I did a smaller one here for that purpose. See, I'm stamping them out here because so I can see it. And uh, so I can kind of plan my uh, scene. I'm not really f super familiar with using my stamps yet. So, okay, let's see. Let's put her up here. Like, they're paddle boarding, you know. They're kind of going, you know, back to the cabin, you know. It's, you know, the moon comes up. It's like, okay, when you see the moon come up, you know, um, you know, come home when you live on the water like that. It's like growing up, you know, whenever the street lamps went on, you know, as kids were supposed to come in, you know, for the night. All right, so I think that worked out pretty good. I like this uh, kind of this scenario like this. And I'll put more of a, like a, you know, stuff in here, but this will be like a blue tone scene with, uh, you know, some shimmering water in here. I'll add that in there. This boat right here, I didn't add in that um, 
shadow area beneath this boat because I figured we can do that afterwards. If I added it in, it was going to make the design a little bit too big. And then I couldn't fit it on the plate, you know, because the plate was already uh, like super packed in here. So I don't want to just use that for like tone in here. So a little practical thing, you know, just to get more, you know, get more stamps on the, those plates for us. But we have to kind of add that in ourselves. Well, we can also do it in the color that we're coloring the, you know, the the uh, scenario with. So if you're if this is a sunset in here or something like that, then you, you can color the you can create a, a shadow in this area in your warm tones instead of, you know, something cool anyway. All right. Let's see here. Cecile. Yeah, they are really exciting for me to play around with here. Let's see here. So we got the cabins going right here. Oh. So Linda's going to do a you know a scenario she said um, using um, all of these cabins um, three times each. So there's maybe twelve cabins on a scene, right, Linda? Is that what you said? <laughs> no, she's going to use all of them in one scene. It is like a big scene like this. I don't know what this is right here. You can do like this um, Adirondack, you know type of scenario. Let me try something right here. Let's use a couple of these cabins together like this. Um, let's see. Let's do this right here. here. Let me see. Let me take a look at these right here. I haven't used this one yet. Let's use this one right here. Let's put a couple of these um, together right here let's see if let's see if um they blend in like i have whatever designed them to be blended in with or how they've been designed to be blended in okay so this design right here this cabin on okay so i'm going to use the two off the daytime cabins right here. This cabin is a little bit closer to us than this one. You know, you can see in the scale, this is like a little bit farther away. So this one right here is going to be a little bit higher than the other one, okay? So um, higher up in the scenario tends to represent something a little bit more distant. Okay, let me see right here. Let me just eyeball this. Okay, so it's gonna be like this. This is a half page uh, piece of paper, by the way. So let me go like this right here. Just eyeballing it. These are the types of things I need to work out over, you know, over time when I do a couple of these things. But let's see if I can get something decent on this first uh, kind of attempt here. Um, uh, Semi-gloss half page piece of paper right here. Or it might be a little bit, I don't know, maybe it might be a little bit taller than um, five and a half. I'm not sure. I do a lot of things on the half page, but I should really cut it down because I like it a little bit more elongated. You know, sometimes I don't like this dimension right here. Um, a little boring for me. But I'm lazy, so I'm just cutting like pieces up in, uh, you know, half page, quarter page typically. All right, so here's this one right here. Okay, that one's that one. I'm not sure how low, how much lower I should do this one. Okay, so when you're coloring these ones up too, if you want a lot of color in those trees, if you want those trees to be like green, you don't really stamp them out in black and then put like some color over the top of that green. You could do that a little bit, especially in the open ones. But if you want those back ones, inherently green and just you know make things easier for you then color those green on here with like a you know dye basting pen or you can tap on that color with your um dye basting pad and then probably have you know some black around in here a little bit darker but that's that's just the way to just get it kind of inherently um whatever color you're going after okay now the open ones you have to add in that color after so I've left those open like that so you can color them whatever color scheme you want. 
Okay, so let's see. Let's get this one right here. Let's go a little bit lower or quite a bit. I don't know. Maybe I should have stamped everything up a little bit higher. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm kind of... I didn't leave a lot of room for uh, like this water down here. Uh, maybe this one's going to be more about sky. Okay, let's go like that. I need to fill in there with a little bit of rocks. That looks okay. And maybe I should have tilted it a little. I would, I would have bumped it over another, you know, slight amount here. Quarter inch maybe on this one. Okay, let me do something right here. I need to bring in a little bit more, uh, whatever. Clo I'm gonna say closure, that doesn't sound like the right word. Framing. Okay, so I'm using the uh, one of the nighttime cabin things that has a lot of trees like on this, uh, what is it? It's on the left-hand side right here. Let's go like that. Let's go, wait, is that close? Yeah. Let's go like this. Okay, and let's do, okay, this one has a lot of trees up top here again. Let me go back to that one. Learning, uh, I'm learning these stamps, uh, everyone. <laughs> like I said, I'm I'm still kind of figuring it out, you know. In I know how these all these designs are supposed to work in theory, but really until you kind of play around with them and test them out, you know. That's you know that's when you really know. Okay, so I don't want this all this cabin down here, of course, and I want this area right in back right here to transition a little bit more. So I'm wiping off some of this, okay? I'm wiping it off pretty good too because I just re-inked, you know, my pad. So I'm taking some of this ink off right there. And then what I'm doing is I need to fill in this area right here because it looks re weird like that. So let's go like this right here. You don't mask off like super carefully because you want everything to blend in with one another. Let me see, actually, let me go even less careful. So we have a like quarter inch, half inch of it showing right in there. And like, again, I don't want, you know, the top of that cabin back in the distance there. I just want some additional trees like this, so. I'm stamping it off my paper right here. There we go. off my blotter paper, in other words. All right, that looks pretty good. And let me see here. Let me try something right here. Um, let's do this again. Here, let me actually, let me blot that off once. So let's go for a pretty light impression and then transitioning a little bit more. Maybe I tra maybe I took off too much, I don't know. And then let's create um, a little bit of horizon line right there. I'll go with a straight piece of the uh, paper towel here. And I don't want to stamp that out make sure I didn't ink that up at all. And then let's go like this maybe. Okay, so that's like another little area back there, and this is like water. Okay, so I'll fill that in with some additional texture, like that. Huh. That looks okay. Let me see, let me see. Let me do that again here. Let me see if I can get an even lighter one. There's one impression, two impressions. Do it a little bit offset from your other ones and go up and offset a little bit. Let's see. Yeah, 
yeah, that looks like, I don't know, looks like pretty good. You can just keep going lighter and lighter in the background, kind of building up this whatever uh, forested area like that, I think. I don't know, I might need to come up with another design just, just with the trees. So in and I, you know, we don't have to, we can just keep using them like that, but I don't know, it's a little bit easier. Just take this, you know, stamp and if it's only the trees like that. <laughs> okay, so let's see here. A little bit more texture right around in here. Like this. So all of these things are kind of merging in with each other reasonably well, but then you add in this additional common texture, color, tone, you know. And this isn't even lighting, but just this little extra texturing like this kind of unifies the area a little bit more. Okay. Go like that. And... All right, you know, I need to do some like other types of daytime types of things, but I'm, you know, we're experimenting with this new one. I want to put this big, huge rising moon, like maybe right in here. That seems like the perfect spot for it. Is it rising or is it setting? You know, it's uh, it's up to you. <laughs> okay, let's see. Okay, I don't want to go over that super light pine tree right there. I don't think, unless I just did. <laughs> All right, yeah. I got a smudge right there reasonably dramatic dark night sky over here maybe glow on the horizon a little bit and that would be kind of cool all right I, I i am just going to add in some shoreline right here i didn't leave a lot of space right here but let's go ahead and add some of this in here because it does need to be kind of framed off a little bit more here i'll put something across that smudgy little thing too. That little mark right in there. About like that. Uh, yeah, girl on the dock would have worked right down there too. It would have fit right in this space, oh well. Um, okay, let me see here. And the little design that the entire new line was kind of built around in the, uh, in the owl. I'm joking. That was the last uh, design that was added. Like that. Flying across the full moon. Like that. All right, so half page. And, you know, you can combine your things. So if the cabin, in terms of scale, is a little bit larger, then you put it a little bit lower. If the same size, then, you know, you can put them on the same horizon. But th this is just a little bit higher like that so it represents something a little bit more distant i probably could have went a little bit higher maybe you know uh eighth of inch quarter inch or something like that maybe that would have been a little bit better in terms of creating more a little bit more scale you know or distance i should say but the trees in the background really blended in nicely i i don't see like any seams in here at all um, with those trees. So those things worked out really nice in terms of the, uh, I oscillated it, you know, I, I went, um, you know, kind of light. So there's, you know, there's light, you know, dark, light, dark, light, dark, light, you know what I mean? Medium, light, dark, like that. Um, across these trees, just, you, got, you know, with the idea of, you know, this, us, potentially using these things in a certain way, and that worked out pretty decently, I would say. 
and it made for a really easy blend too like that it blended into this lower area really good so um anyway okay so let's take a look at these right here i think i got through a lot of the designs right here um the, th the thing that's good for me maybe not in terms of like an instructional video where i kind of like go off track and start doing these other things but it's kind of a good thing because it you want to do you know ideally when you're using some new designs or playing around with things you know you get ideas pop up you know while you're doing them so it's like okay i need to try this and that's what happened with some of these leaves and things like this or these trees like this with the hammock i think this sets a perfect little scenario right here this like it's like, you know, setting up, it's like a movie screen right here. You can put whatever you want in here. And I think that'll be, this character like this will be really engaging. Now, I didn't use the smaller one. Um, there's the smaller one, you know, that's a little bit more distant. And I'll use her with some other, you know, other types of imagery. I, I didn't use everything. I didn't use this little swimmer in here. I didn't want to put her, um, like, you know, in the middle of that, you know, pond right there. But... Um, you know, just kind of playing around with these things. I see like a lot of things with the backdrop of the moon like that, um, a horizon, you know, rising up, um, the sailboats, things like that. But stuff like this, you know, with those designs, I, I there's, there's one thing. Okay, so as a designer too, one of the things that you're trying to do sometimes is you want to have things a little bit more kind of simple in terms of the design because you want people to have more um, options as far as variation that they can do. So the more, you know, things that I add around something, it gets, you know, busier and busier and, and more just complete of a one single image, right? But on these ones, I went kind of, you know, I went pretty crazy with the surrounding areas on them. Um, so, you know, so they're really a, a very complete statement, but like, but again, you know, you can use that right there as just like a whole tree or something like that. But, um, I know these ones are pretty, uh, complete, but they're really fun to use, you know? And like I said, you know, just stamping them out like that. I, I'm going to color this one in, but I'm just saying as far as the compositions go, they make for some pretty fast compositions. So on something like this, here's this elongated format right here. But I think that even this, this here's like a quarter page card or something like that, a little bit longer than that, but roughly, um, that would be a fine composition right there. This lower composition right here, you can even have this and no Kevin right here. You can have like the moon rising on a, like a horizon up there or something like that. But um, yeah, these things come together really, really fast if you want them to be, you know? But again, like this one took a little bit longer just because it's like a double page right there. But, um, you know, I think they could make for a pretty, relatively speaking, fast, uh, larger format scene, eight and a half by 11, 11 by 17, um, you know, with no problem um, in terms of uh, like time expenditure, you know? You won't see me doing a ton of, you know, 11 by 17 or something like that, but I, I should probably experiment around with it a little bit. Maybe Linda's going to do it for us, though. We need we need five different variations of the 11 by 17, Linda, when you get your stamps. <laughs> and, uh, oh, hey, hey, so, you know, the wood grain paper, too. The wood grain paper comes in that 11 by 17. So, you know, you can just do one on the 11 by 17 you got that all that wood grain going into the background. There's barely anything you need to add to it. So, um, you know, that should be really fun. But I like this one right here, you know. Stamp it out, you know. A little bit of tone in those windows right there. You know, and that was it. You know, a couple stars in the sky. Like I said, I could still add a little bit of shading to it. But I don't know. It's, it almost doesn't need very much more. You can just format your card. Look at a little... Um, Reverse uh, image word stamp up here might be kind of interesting or maybe in gold even or something like that if it was a light enough gold. Um, like word stamp and reverse up here would kind of mean neat. Peace, you know, or something like that would be kind of uh, an interesting um, 
I don't know, whatever addition to the card. So let's see. Uh, let's see here. Um, the jumping fish in the lake. That'd be a good idea. I was saying in one of these scenes right here, yeah, where I was, I don't know, in one of these, I thought, um, uh, yeah, like a fit, you know, someone fishing in the foreground would have been perfect. But yeah, like a something like rising, you know, uh, out of the water would be cool. Jumping bass or something like that. I need to do like a maybe smaller um, fish, maybe the salmon one, just that little silhouette could be jumping out of the, jumping out of the water or something like that. Uh, yeah, Sue, they are. They are available for uh, shipping. So I shipped uh, some out today and uh, some will be going out tomorrow and then Monday. I have most of the individual orders done, so they're ready to uh, they're ready to go. But yeah, I just got the just got the rubber in yesterday afternoon. Uh, my plate, my guy had the plates from on Monday, but um, I don't know, I had a he had a lot of uh, work to do, so he got finally got uh, my order out on uh, Wednesday. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So, Bonnie, yeah. I, those koi fish like that and those lily pads like that with the mystic imagery, like with some, you know, spring, you know, we can do like some spring blossoms or something like that. I would have those mystic images in here, the mystic trees left and right or whatever. The koi fish, I would color those in. Um, I think on those koi fish, like on some of these, I made the, so koi fish, if that has those, you know, that gold and red, you know, patterning on them, those spots or whatever you call it. Um, I made those black, okay, in the designs. So when you color up one of those little fish, um, color up the spots, you know, I would do it directly on the stamp and then stamp them out so that they didn't inherently have that color on there. Um, but yeah, some of that, so some of these little reds and things like that in the mystic imagery, I want to do um, a bunch of those pink blossom types of uh, foliage scenarios with the mystic imagery, but you know, and that's where you take some of that, you take your pink paint pen and put some of those kind of floating around in the water down here. Um, and uh, I think that would be really, really fun. But that's what I'd imagined. Oh, so like these koi right here too. When we're doing uh, reflection cards, if anyone's just joining in, you know, for the first. So the mystic line is kind of like a Chinese painting, ink painting things. Okay, so anyways, but it, not this isn't the Chinese ink painting thing, but the so the reflection cards like this type of thing right here. Um you know, where we have this near water down here. I totally see these fish when I was designing these things like this. I always wanted, some, you know, a few extra things to lay down in this shallow area right in here, or the near area of the reflection area. Um, by the way, those are those little uh, modeler's leaves on there. But um, yeah, some little fish kind of swimming around right in here I thought would be really cool in this... Uh, types of scenario like this. So the mystic line of imagers, we can do mystic trees left and right or something like that and a bunch of rocks down here, but then you can have this koi in this area now. And I would probably, I'd probably stamp them out and you can, you can get a little bit of color, you know, using alcohol inks on this foil right here. It doesn't, you know, it's not like a super bright version of it because it's, you know, these are transparent, you know, but you can get a little coloring on there. So you can have these like forms like swimming around like right down here and it might have a little bit of a, a subtle, um, whatever, coloration to them, you know, depending on what you, uh, color you do use on them. But they would, I don't know, I think they would be harmonized really well with the, that. So yeah, so on these ones right here too, um, uh, these waterside types of things like this, if you put any of these cabins, okay, if you're doing a, um, a mirrored scenario, let me see if I have a piece of gold or something right here. Um, okay, so if you're doing um, a reflection card, 
what you do is you have this area right down here, right on the edge. Okay, let me just cut away with some of this right here. I'm not saying this is how you do it, but I'm just showing you how that, you know, that cabin will reflect down in your water like that. And if it's the nighttime cabins, if you put a little, you know, tone in there, it should look really cool like that. Okay, so right there like so. This right here on wood grain with this gold would look really cool, I think. So anyways, yeah, a lot more kind of exciting uh, things to do with, uh, you know, different types of simple constructions like that, too. Maybe I'll do that in the next video. I'll do some quick uh, reflection card uh, scenarios or something of that nature. And then if we have that moon or something like that in a reflection card, especially if it was on, you know, some light paper or something like that. That would really reflect down in that water really well. Huh. Reflection cards and horizon cards. To do a baby shark. <laughs> someone wanted, uh, someone asked about um, uh, like creatures. Uh, did, was it someone in here uh, on the chat? But they were talking about uh, like, uh, you know, like Bigfoot, Loch Ness Monster type of things. Uh, maybe the shark would be another, uh, you know, the addition to. Uh, Kind of a funky uh, set. It'd be a boutique line. <laughs> Hello, Froggy Fresh. Megan Ells, good to see you. The girl laying in on the tree. Yeah. Isn't this fun like that? I really like the uh, that hammock right there. So I was mentioning too, you know, when most of my people are go looking into the scene, okay? So having something kind of larger like that um, is really fun because, it, like I said, um, or like here's this girl on the dock right here, like in these two ones. Like I should put these two like next to each other, like that. But um, it's it's kind of the emotional, I don't know, whatever uh, tone for a scene when you're looking at something. You know, it's just someone taking time out to really enjoy the views or something like that. You know what I mean? Um, I don't know, maybe more realistic these days, they'd have like a cell phone in their hand, but, you know, it's more romantic to not have that in there, you know. But anyways, I'll finish some of these off in a future video. This one's going to have a little bit of uh, um, colored pencil coloring in those trees right in there. Um, maybe I'll add some stars. I'll splatter paint some stars up there or just add them in with, um, you know, my paint pens, something of that sort. Um, just a little bit of shading on this one. This one right here, I, I might add just a quote stamp right in here and I think that'd be perfect. Or I want to put some mountains back in here or something like that. I can do it, you know, I, I, I have a feeling that this basic composition right here is going to be used by me several different times um, in the future. This one right here would be kind of an interesting reflection card too, you know, you can have that character kind of sitting waterside like this, you know, and she could be reflected in that like that. And if it's like night or something, you had like a big moon up here or something like that reflecting down that water would be kind of cool. And koi fish. <laughs> This one right here, I don't know, it's wide open, you know, the, on the uh, the semi-gloss card stuff. We can do um, any type of media that we want on there. For those that do um, pastels, you can add some of that down there. Add, you know, your, your dye-based inks and pastels over the top of it. I see like this little misty kind of um, cloudy formations, you know, around being illuminated by that moon. It would be really cool. I don't know how I'd do that on with dye-based inks. You'd have to use um, some kind of pastel. So if you add like some tones, maybe some a gradation of blue tones in the background, and if you went with like some pan pastels, maybe I'll try it with um, like my white pastel pencil or something like that, and just get some atmospherics going in this area right here. You can have an, even at some of it going through the trees, and I think that'd be really cool, like some mist. So we know we have this gigantic light source in the sky now, nighttime light source. You can have all these like things in here that would be 
fairly, I don't know, whatever, realistic looking, you know, have like a lot of like mist running through those trees and illuminated by such a bright light source. It'd be kind of cool. This one right here, I think I'm going to do a little bit of horizon right out here. Um, you know, with the water and I'll probably just mask that off and just um, color that in, you know, like blue tones or something like that. And we'll put some uh, reflections on this water of the light like that. So I don't know. I'll try to finish, uh, get to some of these um, this week. But anyway, yeah, the Kraken, right. <laughs> Immediately when I think of that Kraken, I think of uh, Lord of the Rings, Fellowship of the Rings nowadays with that Kraken coming out. I watched the, uh, the making of and the guy, that creature coming out of the water. He was saying, well, we didn't want to make it just look like just some Kraken coming out of the water. Throw cell phone. <laughs> All right. How many scenes did we get in here? Two, four, um, whatever, six, seven, but two of these were double-sided, so pretty fast stuff with these uh, new designs. And again, thanks to everyone, you know, if you've ordered whatever, future ordering, thanks for your support of the line. And again, can't wait to see what you guys do with these um, stamps. Um, uh, I'd have to say they're pretty fun. <laughs> And they're working really good. I like this, uh, the buildup of those trees and things like that. And uh, just the simple use of one design, you know, for this entire little inlet area is really fun. And uh, yeah, on these quarter page cards, that larger kind of design like that just really uh, does the work like instantly, you know. Two little areas like that and, you know, it can be done, but you can add in more if you want to, so... Uh, fun stuff, so nice and uh, versatile and universal at the same time. Thanks, everyone. Uh, if you have any questions, drop me a note. Uh, thanks for joining into the live right here. If you're on uh, Facebook and if you've posted any kind of note or anything like that, I can't see um, any kind of live comments um, except for the YouTube comment uh, window, chat window. So, uh, but if you asked anything on uh, Facebook, I'll jump on there at some point in time and uh, we'll get something answered uh, in a, you know, very untimely manner. Somebody, anyway, it's like three days later, you know, there's like, hey, what paper did you use right, you know, are you using right now? <laughs> Thanks, everyone. 